So today's the day that Doug's going to come by and help us brew. Yes. He sent suggestions for the recipe. Yes. And we're going to use the Bruja, which, uh, which you saw us excitedly unpack. So, uh, but now it needs assembling. Now it needs assembling. So I'm going to assemble it. You want to crush the grain? I'm going to mill, mill the grain. Mill the grain. You're going to mill the grain. So there's a lot of parts. Hey. Looks hey, like Doug, how are you? Good. Looks like you're get, just getting started here. Yeah, so there's a lot of parts, but it really isn't that difficult uh, to put together. This, uh, this is something I've never quite seen before. You uh, mind telling me how all of this works? So it's a four-in-one, he yeah. calls it. You brew in the conical. Yeah. It's electric. So you mash, you boil, you ferment, and with this one, you can uh, carbonate. Wow. Really? Yeah, so you can force carbonate in it as well. Wow. And and serve from it if you wanted to. It's like a tiny brewery. It is a, it is a little brewery. Um, and so it's, you know, it's all tri-clamps. And this, uh, this looks like it's jacketed? It is, uh, yeah, it is also jacketed, so you can run uh, cold water through it. We've got a chiller. So you can chill. Can you also heat with it? You could heat with it, yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty crazy little machine. But that looks like a heating element. This is the heating element. This is the one you use for the boil. Okay. Um, but you could uh, you could use it. And where do you where do you put that? Yeah. So heating element goes in. Wow. And uh, tri clamp. I'm still not very good with the tri clamps. One handed, you mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Undo it a bit. There you go. Cool. Now, do you need this part? For the mash or just for the boil? Um, well, you heat the water. Oh, okay. So and it's, your strike water. Uh, your strike water. And it also, so it's uh, temperature regulated. Yeah. And it will. So you'll get to the exact temperature that you're looking for. Exact temperature that you need. And then you, we're going to attach this pump. And so you recirculate the mash water throughout the mash. Wow. So throughout the entire mash process, you're getting an even temperature. You're getting an even temperature. And because you're circulating it, you're also setting the grain bed early. And uh, it should give a cleaner wort. So I presume there's some sort of basket that sits in there? There is a colander. We'll get oh, to that. Great. So uh, let's put the rest of it together. Okay. So. All right. You look like you're ready for water. We are ready for water. All right. Does I not make a mess? Yeah. That's it. Eh? <laughs> That's it. It's the fear of how could we... Oh. And... There we go. Cool. So according to Beersmith, 22 and a half liters, and we heat it to 157. How do we know when we have enough water? Ah, genius. So now we wait. All right. What's our temp? 81. 81. Going to what temperature? 156. Okay, we have a bit of wait. Hey guys, I heard you were brewing, and I assumed you have some time to kill while we wait for the thing to heat up. I was wondering if you want to try this Limberlost farmhouse ale from Sada City. Would let me, let me get some glasses. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to be very careful when I open this because it is a can conditioned ale. So there's uh, active yeast in the can. So I'm Thank you. a little nervous. I might explode everywhere, but and we're good. <laughs> Doug, do you want to do the honors? Sure. All Thank right. you. Some glass for you. So it's quite pale. Yeah. So my understanding is they actually cultivated a yeast from the forest around uh, the brewery Muskoka, and they're using locally Ontario-grown hops as well. So this is like as local as you can get for a beer. And uh, these are guys, I don't know if you guys know much about Sada City, they're up in Gravenhurst, and they do some excellent, excellent beers. We, uh... So you're gonna want a little bit of the bottom. Yeah, get that yeast in there. The, in the 24 Beers Project, we did a Sada City, their Endless Summer Pale yep. Ale? That was was it the, the, the pale ale or the blonde ale or blonde? something? Blonde, yeah. yeah. It was good. Yeah, oh, that good. smells great. Nice and cloudy. Mm -hmm. Why does it smell like cheese? So there is some definite funk in there. Um, there's some Brett yeast in there, Brett Namices yeast, so the wild, funky yeast, and that would give that sort of cheesy. cheesy. I, I, might, I call it cheesy. bready. Bready, yeah. Bready. I still Not struggle. Bready, bretty. I still struggle to 
figure out how to describe Brett beers to people a lot of times. I say farmhouse. I've never like, actually referred to it as cheesy, but, but cheesy that's... makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, especially like blue cheese, like those sort of softer. Yeah. I'm not a not a. It's not Limburger. It's. No. So what, do you, nice. what do you think of that? I like that. It's really dry. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say it's drier and crisper than I anticipated. It's got those like fruity esters that you get in like a like a Belgian double or triple, but it doesn't have that sweetness on the back end, which oh. I actually quite enjoy because I, I, my one issue with Belgian doubles is that they are a little too sweet, mm -hmm. and I, I like that this has that aroma but without that sort of candied flavor at the end. It has a nice full body to start and then just disappears. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think we could brew one of these in this? Dries up my mouth. I don't see why not. All right. You have but to find have, the wild, le wild we, yeast. We, yeah, we got to go. Got to go to the Limberlost yeast. Forest and get some yeast. Ah, all right. Is this uh, is this escarpment lambs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they they seem to be the, the big guys in Ontario these days with the with the yeasts, especially with the with the wild sort of bacteria. I like that, but there's what a thousand cans, two thousand cans. Yeah, that's uh, not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. No. That's one of the great things and frustrating things about a lot of Ontario breweries is they make these amazing beers in such small batches that you're like, oh, this is amazing, and I can't ever get it ever again, or at least not until next year. Um, but I also think that's kind of what makes it so exciting is that you get to try these things, and they're, they're unicorns. They're rare. You never get to see them again. So you got to sort of get out there and try them when you, well, you can. Keeps it interesting. Exactly. Exactly. And we wait. <laughs> now we wait. 87 now. Okay, so we've hit 157. 157, so the mash colander goes in. Okay. Just and like this. Just like that. There we go. And so if we just turn it, we can put the recirculating pump. And there's Julie with the, with the grain. Uh, grain. So you guys so. milled these grains? Milled yes. the grains. Julie just did it. Nice. Looks good. Oh, it smells good. Does, doesn't it? I always love just like eating a little bit of fresh, yeah, it's so good. fresh malted barley. Okay, cool. All right, you do you want to stir or pour? I'm gonna stir. All right. Oh. Change spots. Okay. That's our official, official mash paddle. I love that smell. And what's the what's the grain bill? What are we we're mostly pale malt? So this is uh, mostly two row, two row pale. Let me, beer smith. Uh, half kilo of amber. Okay. And a half kilo of crystal eighty. Now get, get a bit of that sweetness in there. Yeah, it's getting thicker. Turning now, nice. Doug, would there be a way that you could do this when you're mashing in that would make sure that everything does get wet? Like, could you have? like a sprayer or something going? Well, in a in a brewery setting, normally yeah. what happens is the grain and the water go in at the same time. Right. So your grain would be, or sorry, your water would be coming in from what's called a hot liquor tank. Coming in from the bottom, wouldn't it? And filling from the you, bottom? Uh, you can do it that way, or you can spray it down at the same time. It depends on, depends on the setup of the mash tun. Right. Uh, but what it does is it ensures that as the grain's coming in, it comes in very slowly. Right. Uh, it gets augered in from the from the mill, and everything gets everything so gets. And then you, depending on depending on your mash tun, you may have someone standing over it just like this with a paddle. Right. Or you may have rake, rakes on the inside that actually mash it all. I've seen that the rakes it all up. Yeah. 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 But because it's not going to be perfect. Ooh. Oops. No, that's it. Thought there was less there. How's our temp there, Doug? One fifty six. One fifty six. It should drop. Let's, uh, well, let's turn on the pump and see what happens. That might help. Okay, so the bottom valve opens. I need to plug it in over here. And that'll, that'll prime it. I assume that's plug it stirred in. enough. Oh, there you go. Nice. And that is awesome. Yeah, so uh -huh. we can just control it with this valve here to uh, keep it from being too much. Mm -hmm. It's still at 157. It didn't drop? No, it went up. That's weird. Hmm. No explaining. It should have dropped. The volume of grain that went in should have absorbed a lot of the heat. Well, it there, it's dropping now. Okay. So now what? So, oh, start the timer. Oh. I would also leave this open until it drops to the right temperature. To the right temperature? And then put the cover on. So, go. One hour. 
you're doing an hour long mash? An hour long mash, and then we're going to rise to 168 for a mash, mash out. out. 10 minutes? 10 minutes, and then we'll sparge. And so, what is the purpose of this recirculator? What is this going to help do? Um, it'll help set the grain bed. Okay. Um, it'll help maintain the mash temperature throughout, because mm -hmm. if you're circulating the water, right. you're always passing you're it over. Getting the... hot spots and cold spots. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm sure there's other stuff that I don't know yet. Well, it, mostly it's about consistency. It's okay. keeping the temperature consistent throughout. Yeah, yeah. Then we're down to 154. Yep. Okay. It's doing its job. Cool. Awesome. So we'll let that go for an hour. Sounds good to me. Excellent.